สวัสดีครับ Good evening and welcome to Sunday in Thailand for the edition of Sunday July 30th 2023 I'm Varin s a c h a d e w your host and my partner in crime Kun Pat Sang Tham the editor of Benchmark Media Asia and also co-editor of Thailand Morning Call our other show on Nomad Media Thailand in Thai and this one Sunday in Thailand the show in English giving you a, a wrap of what's happening in Thailand throughout the week. A highlight, an update, or a wrap, whatever you want to call it. So, Kun Pat, welcome to the show. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดี Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy long weekend. Happy long weekend too. Yes. Um. Um. Uh, well, I heard from some businessmen that the government should have announced it earlier that Monday is going to be a a holiday too, so that they can plan earlier, so that they can even boost uh, more revenue from tourism. Well, one good thing about giving a short notice about this extra additional holiday, which is like a hole between long consecutive days off, is that they don't have to take uh, negative comments or attack, you know, from the public or you know the people who oppose this government because. By announcing it earlier, like in the annual calendar, they might have to deal with kind of you know all kinds of criticism that Thailand has a lot of holidays already, and this is not uh, favorable to investment or so on and so forth. So by announcing it in short notice, it's good, you know. So it's done. Yeah. And I'm wearing a yellow tie on purpose because I think this is only in Thailand that we we color code days of the week because mm. I, I haven't seen it anywhere. Monday is for yellow and Tuesday for pink, Wednesday for green, Thursday for orange, Friday for blue, Saturday for purple or violet, and Sunday for red. So because you know our king, uh, King Rama X, like his father, he was born on Monday, so that's why uh, his. Color is yellow, so we are. I'm wearing this uh, out of respect for uh, his birthday celebration, which was a holiday too on Friday. In Western perception, uh, matching colors with the days of the week can be uh, related if they really, you know, look into it in terms of linguistic. You know, like Monday is lunar, and the color of the moon can be yellow or Thursday is Jupiter, and the color of planet Jupiter is kind of reddish orange, you know, and Saturn, uh, purple, and things like that. But because uh, <laughs> the ties are the tie is into uh, astrology, uh, so, you know, so maybe that's the reason that we really. Identify each day with a particular color more than people in the Western world. Yes, so we're in the long weekend celebration starting from King's birthday. So we want to wish uh, him uh, a great year ahead. Long live His Majesty King w a c h i r a l o n g o n So now I would like to uh, take a short break by uh, presenting the uh, scoop, interesting scoop from Naughty by Elizabeth Playgroup. We're investing. In the they call it Generation Alpha. Are we losing hope on uh, the teenagers in Thailand? <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, there's a uh, not a quote, but it's sort of like a survey comparing the box office of Barbie the movie with Oppenheimer, and Oppenheimer beats Barbie at the box office. In India and Thailand, you know, and these two movies are of different genre. And Oppenheimer is, of course, you know, it's a uh, uh, sort of like semi documentary. You know, it's uh, made from a book, true, but it's a story that needs uh, intellectual interpretation. So, uh, by discovering that Thailand and India. Prefer to watch Oppenheimer. That's a sign of hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that we are actually 
intellectual. <laughs> Great. A, a, a little bit more. I'm not saying that uh, Barbie the movie is not intellectual, but, you know, just to look at it plain and simple, you know, Barbie is plainly entertainment and Oppenheimer <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, allows people of today who did not have much information about World War II or Adamic bomb, um, American politics or whatsoever, you know, so they need to take in some kind of historical information, you know. <laughs> yes. Well, Barbie, uh, misleading. You know, you, 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 you walk into the cinema expecting something, but you walk out uh, getting something else. You know, it, it's not what you expect. So, uh, well, I'm not going to spoil it. But, uh, well, right now we go to uh, Naughty by Elizabeth and uh, get some trivia on uh, raising kids from the preschool, which is in Yenakad area. And then we'll be back with the uh, news update of the week and we'll get some comments or hear some thoughts from Kun Pat at the end of the show as well regarding, you know, all the things we talk about in our news updates. So we'll be right back. Welcome to Naughty by Elizabeth. Children learn best when they are happy and they will be very happy when they can do things by themselves. You will be amazed that some of the behaviors that you worry about or try to fix can simply be solved by getting them involved in the process. For example, if they hate eating vegetables, get them involved in the process from planting to cooking preparation. By the time they wait for the vegetables to grow, cut, watch, and cook, they will eventually be eager to try eating them. So, the role of parents is to get them involved along the process of the activities that they enjoy, feel value, and have a sense of ownership. It can simply be any activities in the house. Thailand this weekend is enjoying a special long weekend as the government has announced additional public holiday to fill the gap between the king's birthday anniversary, the weekend, and two consecutive Buddhist days, making it a stretch of six days off. This extra long weekend is expected to boost spending generated by travel activities all around the country. The first half of year 2023 Thailand has already seen a continuous inbound tourist traffic that has brought in more than 13 million tourists from all over the world and the income from tourism industry from January to June has totaled more than 3 trillion baht or about 87 billion US dollars. Despite some unpleasant politics related situations, the success story of tourism industry in Thailand is the result of unwavering efforts of the democratically elected government which has jump-started the country with development of infrastructure, industrial investment packages, and efficient service sector. Visitors have found that traveling in Thailand in recent years is much more convenient and comfortable than 10 years ago. And most of all, when compared to visiting other countries in the region, Thailand offers one of the best value travel spendings in the world. 
The long weekend does not necessarily mean it's going to be peaceful in the news, unfortunately. The discussions and news report on TV and every platform of media are filled with speculation about former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra's return to Thailand. After 17 years in exile in Dubai to run away from a total of 10 years incarceration from various prosecutions, Thaksin announced that he will return to Thailand early August. But this is not the first time he announced his return to his motherland. He has done that before but never kept his promise. So Thaksin has got all eyes and all ears on him, wondering if he would actually serve his jail sentences or there are some special arrangements made for him as an elderly inmate with health issues so he could be quickly transferred to a hospital in comfortable room with clean sheet and air-conditioned comfort. If he actually steps foot into Thailand this time, it would definitely stir up doubts and anger toward Pua Thai party. Pua Thai has been campaigning for bringing Thaksin home all along. And while the Red Shirt Party has recently suggested a reconciliation with political parties that used to stand on the opposite sides, any cloudy agenda to allow Thaksin to slip through a legal procedure would never keep millions who joined the protest to kick out Thaksin regime staying in peace. Moving on to another hot issue in Thailand that got people saying for Pete's sake or rather for Pita's sake. After the second attempt to nominate Pita Lim Jaranrat as the Prime Minister failed, Mr. Pita started a road tour to towns and cities around Thailand saying he had to thank the people who voted for him. But when he took to the stage again and again, he threw a rhetorical question, why the political party with the largest vote cannot have a prime minister? Pita doesn't get tired of spreading this misleading message. As Thailand's general election does not elect prime minister, but rather electorate representatives. Last week, he gave an interview on CNN with Christiana Monpour, a veteran journalist, and once again he said, quote, In any functioning democracy, whoever wins the election should become the prime minister. Unquote. Perhaps Pita has confused the election in Thailand with the election in the United States, where people vote for the president. And when Amanpour asked Pitha, your opponents have accused you that you have essentially disqualified yourself because of holding shares in media company, Pitha said, it's a made-up case against my prime ministerial candidacy. The fact is I don't even own the shares. My late father owned it. It's a defunct media company that was closed down 17 years ago and I can never have any political gains from holding those shares as an inheritance management. However, the case against me was decided two hours before my Prime Minister title election in the Parliament. Well, to straighten things up and fly right, Pita inherited the shares in the media company the moment his father died. So he owned the shares and he knew it. Being manager of inheritance does not free him from inheriting the shares as he is the son, one out of two. His younger brother inherited the father's shares and becomes the rightful owner of the shares. Why would it be different for Pitha? And by the way, the media company has never been closed. ITV public company has been in operation until present, paying tax and reporting its balance sheet to the tax department every year, as well as paying dividends to its shareholders all along. Western media need to make an effort and do a proper research on what is the truth and what are lies, especially journalists who claim that they would be truthful, not neutral. So, can we really give credit to the government, the, well, right now, 
it's the interim government because we're waiting for the new government. But shall we give credit to uh, the outgoing government with the success of the tourism that we are enjoying so far? Well, we wouldn't be able to find any other answer except for the works that the current government has done in the past four years or even eight years, you know, because a key factor in uh, bringing in a lot of tourists is the improvement and the development in infrastructure and other areas that cater to the needs and the interests of foreign tourists, you know, and so return tours are very important. The reason that foreign tourists return to Thailand is because they have discovered that, uh, you know, they can find comfort and convenience in a lot of things. And then they spread words of mouth that bring in more tourists. So uh, I, I would say is the simple thing to do but it has never been done so if you have to give credits to somebody or some organizations you can't avoid uh giving credit to the outgoing government absolutely let alone you know uh, maintaining peace although there are lots of undercurrents over the past uh, eight to nine years so well Politics is <laughs> the mm -hmm. reason for that. So uh, what do you make of uh, Kun Thaksin's announcement of returning to the motherland? Well, that has yet to be seen, you know, because he has announced uh, of several times before that he is going to return to Thailand definitely. And then he just disappeared. And the idea of returning to Thailand it's just forgotten. So this is another attempt. But of course, it is uh it coincides with what's going on in Thai politics now, you know, as Pua Thai Party, the party that he is behind uh financially, probably as well as policy wise. And so uh, you know, there's an underlying plan that nobody can really tell. You know, I doubt uh, whether he is willing to come back and face the justice system as an ordinary person. So a special kind of arrangement will have to be made if he really returns. Mm. Well, yet to be seen. We And we, I remember our conversation when the new... The news broke out that we don't actually trust or believe uh, whatever he said because he's been uh, lying uh, many times already in the past uh, to his own benefits. So what about Pita, who has got the nickname by uh, certain Thai people calling him uh, Pitakio, which is a combination of uh, Pita and Pinocchio? Again, <laughs> uh, again, his message uh, on CNN with uh, Christiane Manpour. You know, his behavior uh, about telling white lies or half the truth and distorting the information and all that. Well, you know, we are so used to that. He's been doing that since the time he was sitting in the parliamentary session. But then he still continues to do that, you know. So uh, I'm not going to criticize him today, but, you know, he... Last week, gave an interview on CNN with Christian Amanpour, who is a, you know, multi award winning journalist. You know, she's been around for several decades. And the way that she threw a question at him is to allow him to defend himself with disinformation. And I'm sure, uh, judging from the question that Amanpour used, she obtain enough information to know what is going on. For example, you know, the question about the allegation that Peter has to face, but the kind of structure of, you know, the question is uh, not revealing what's actually going on. And that allows Peter to 
just come out lying straight face saying that the media company that he was alleged with holding the chairs was defunct. The company is not defunct, you know, and by saying that uh, he didn't own the chairs, his father owns the chair. But then again, he said, my late father. So his father died and he inherited the chairs legally and rightfully. So later on, he transferred the shares to his brother. Now, his blood brother could own the shares. So when in, he inherited the shares automatically due to his father's passing, mm. he didn't own the chair. He was only the mm. manager or the inheritance mm. management. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't make sense. And that happens when you lie. You mm. just can't put the story together mm. uh, you know, with mm. good logic or <laughs> reasons. Well, with all the digital footprints of his interviews, you know, we have seen a lot of, uh, you know, montage has been done already, uh, you know, to actually uh, catch him uh, lying uh, blatantly in public uh, in a different uh, years and time. So now it's just going uh, to the international level. So, uh, you know, giving us more footage to actually uh, come up with another montage of his lies after lies after lies. So I'm not that surprised or I'm not really uh, that uh, excited about uh, his interview with the CNN. But are we allowed to question Christian Amanpour's integrity and uh, ethics as a journalist? Well, you know, before this famous interview with Christian Armanpour the week before his second attempt to get voted to become prime minister. He gave an interview with Reuters and, you know, he said pretty much the same thing. Misinformation, disinformation, distortion of information and stuff, you know. But uh, I, Christian Armanpour is one of the most famous journalists in the world. And so for her to do this kind of uh, superficial interview and did not uh, present the actual fact, for example, information about the allegations that Pita faced could be researched very easily online. And uh, since she's a uh, leading name in uh, the world journalism today, you know, uh, other journalists, Western journalists should be aware that, you know, if you kind of go along in the footsteps of Amanpour, you know, you're just one of those journalists who kind of nonchalant, uh, nonchalantly present misinformation, which actually it's also disinformation, and that's not quality journalism. And it's a shame, you know, because uh, journalism in Thailand uh, takes Western journalism as a role model. So, uh, and, and that's the same for the whole world. You know, uh, we go to school in Western countries, in universities, in Europe, England, and America, because we believe that they kind of uh, set the standard, you know, the benchmark, benchmark for the quality of journalism. But obviously, it's uh, very loose and not uh, credible at all. You know, they used to be a beacon, you know, CNN, I look up to them and, you know, well, we as you said, role model. And I look up to uh, Amanpour as well as the inspiration. But uh, after watching uh, this interview, this coverage, you know, like uh, my my feeling has changed. And uh, it also raised the question in my mind, uh, could this interview be a setup or is it arranged or is it like a, a paid interview? Am I wrong for thinking like that? No, the first time I watched this interview, I uh felt right away that it was a setup. It was uh, a chance for Pita to defend himself, you know, and he still said the same thing. He said that uh, as a party leader, 
uh, the party that has won the largest vote must become the prime minister. That's uh, distorted information already. And he has been repeating this whenever he gives an interview with the Western media. And the Western media swallow it. They devour it without a pinch, a grain of salt. And that's really a shame. That's why we're here, to also <laughs> give the world another set of information and for them to decide which is right and which is unethical. Leaving you now with, no, now that we talk about tourism a lot uh, on this episode, recently, last April, uh, well, every year, Nomad Media Thailand, we host a Songkran party, a Thai New Year party for the diplomats, the spouses, and the families. But this year, uh, the Sunday we chose happened to be Easter Sunday. So we did it after Songkran on April 21st, which also coincides uh, with the uh, the day, you know, our kingdom was founded back 200 something years ago, April 21st. But I've been looking for the opportunity to uh, to play this clip, to play this video, because, you know, it's already past Songkran. So, but this is a long weekend, you know, it's a weekend of the celebration as well. So uh, might as well play it now. So uh, well, we'll leave you with the, uh, the Diplomat Splash 2023 and look forward to welcoming you back next Sunday, Sunday in Thailand. Keep it tuned. Subscribe to our channel, Nomad Media Thailand. Comments on the clip, hit like, share it if you like it. And we would really appreciate that. For this Sunday, I'm Varin Sachideo together with Kun Pat Sangtham. We are both signing off and wishing you a wonderful long weekend. See you next Sunday. Swadi Krap. Swadi Krap. We are ready to kick off this year's Diplomat Splash, the Nomads annual Songkran celebration for diplomats and their families. Diplomat Splash is an event that is regarded by Excellencies, the ambassadors and their spouses highly. They recognize the importance of the event and also they have placed their trust in the organization and so they participated in the activities. The Payatai and Paolo Group of Hospital is very honored to be invited to take part in this event for the second time. We see great opportunity for becoming a part of the hospital network in providing and looking after the welfare and wellness of the diplomats and their families. I feel it's very important occasion for the private sector to be able to take part in the event, to get to know members of the diplomatic corps and also to foster these cordial relations further. And I myself hope that we can further strengthen this relationship in a long-term and sustainable way. Nomad Media Thailand a channel by Varin Sachideo initiated the Diplomat Splash and has been hosting the event for the heads of missions, their spouses and family members since the year 2017. The signature of the Nomad's Songkran party is less protocols, so ambassadors can really let loose, wind down and have fun. Our dress code, like ready to get wet or wild wild wet, guarantees no one would be able to leave the party dry. Yet the emphasis on the tradition and culture has never been compromised. Each year, we go extra miles to make sure the festival is celebrated in its most authentic way that allows us to serenade the beauty of our culture and ensures our VIPs are touched by the genuine Thai hospitality, especially through the invaluable support of our partners. Most of the Thai silk that being well known is from the northeast part of Thailand. We have a different and unique print and pattern from the nature, like the leaves, the insects, even the soil or the earth, everything around their village. 
they can bring and to make it as a nice color. We try to promote the natural colors because it saved the world. And I would like to present the really masterpiece of Thai culture through Thai silk. So everyone in the world will know and understand Thai culture more. This is a great opportunity. Thank you.